So, I could not be happier about the weather today. Uh, it's wet, it's rainy, and for the first time in a long time, it's bearable to be outside. Um, I couldn't ask for a better day to come out here and get these uh, shock absorbers replaced. Um, then we can take it down to Firestone and get those front tires put on, get an alignment, and hopefully that'll be about it. We got a lot of other maintenance items. As you can see, I want to show you these back tires. I decided against replacing them because, I mean, truthfully, these things are like brand new. Um, so instead of replacing all the tires, I just went ahead and got the, uh, the two that are in the hatch right there for the front. Here's what the front tires look like on it and a very bizarre tread pattern, I thought. And I don't know if it's just me, but it looks like these tires are just kind of chewed up. I don't even know if you can see that, but uh, yeah, I don't know how much tread these are supposed to have, just a very strange tread pattern. Uh, these are what, Goodyear Eagle F1s? Yeah, these are Eagle F1s. <clears throat> so I decided just to get some new tires for the front. Um, got a jack stand up under here, got the jack over here. I saved you the time of pulling the tire because, I mean, everybody knows how to take a tire off. So we are going to change this shock absorber. We're going to go back to the back. We're going to change the shock absorber in the rear here, which is mounted right there. Um, we're going to do these two. It should be very simple, I hope. I didn't, I didn't read about it first, um, but it appears this is going to be an easy job. Hopefully a hell of a lot easier than that RX-8 strut was yesterday. Uh, we're going to change this uh, this side, put it back together, and then my fiance is going to do the other side. But like I said, she doesn't want to be on video. So I guess let's get started on this. So for me, step one is going to be this nut. Oh, shit. So for me, step one is going to be this nut, which is right here next to this uh, AC uh, sensor. I believe that's a pressure sensor. Um, this nut right here is going to be the first thing we remove, and that should be a 15. If I remember correctly, it's a 15. Yes, it is a 15. So we'll start with that. Once we get that one removed, we'll come down here. And I know it's difficult to see, and I do apologize, but there is a... Uh, there's a nut right here, or a bolt, and then there's a bolt on the other side right here as well. So I decided to change my mind. We're gonna do the bottom one first. There's a little ABS wire in the way here. We just loosen that up, move it out of the way. Gonna get my small impact down in here and just zoom, zoom. Do the same thing for the other side here. Then we'll come up top. We're gonna need an extension. Put us a little extension on here. We'll come up top and hit this 15. And it's spinning. All right, that one's gonna be a pain, of course. All right, so we got it off. I couldn't record it because there's just nowhere to sit this camera down. I don't have anybody to record for me, um, but I'll show you what I did. The top of this started spinning, which is very common, it happens. So I uh, splashed on some WD-40, took the screwdriver, came through the underside, and then I stuck it in between that rubber grommet, that rubber washer, and the metal hat. I put a lot of pressure on it. Hopefully you can see down here the screwdriver. I put a lot of pressure on it, got it up under there, and then hit it. I mean, I hit it. <laughs> I hit it with my big one. All right, this is the the this is a big earthquake, heavy duty uh, impact. I put an adapter on it for the 15 millimeter, and we just went to town on it until that sucker finally came off. So it's really hot right now. I'm gonna let it cool off for a minute, and then. Uh, Actually, we just take this and pull the nut off of it. Yeah, she's she's hot. Sucker was smoking. 
drop it down there and we should have the hat under here which may still be hot too and then last but not least should be a top part of this washer right here a little insulator and that should be everything holding it in from the top these things usually don't like to come out of their happy little home so you got to compress them uh, pull this uh pull this insulator out of the way you can actually see it's already torn and broken so just get you some leverage push the shock down the shock actually still has plenty of resistance on it so this is not a bad shock i said before i didn't think that the uh, shocks were bad on this um, but you can see how quickly it springs right back up into place there we go we got that rubber boot out that just rolled over here next to me so now since i can't do this one-handed i've got to compress this while lifting up on the bottom and pulling this thing out of its happy little home all right so once we cleared this bottom over here just carefully slide it out and there you have your uh your factory shock and like i said this thing is this thing is still good nothing wrong with this shock at all now it's time to grab one of the new ones and prepare it for installation now to prepare it we got to take this little nylon cap off we've got a install kit over here we need to break open it's already starting to heat up out here too so we've got our two insulators got our nut and this cap so to start with you got to put this cap on like so and you take yourself one of these insulators and you always want this little uh, notched part um, to go up it faces up on the very bottom so that it fits through this hole and then on the top we're going to put it the opposite way so that this uh, protruding edge here is down and then we'll put this uh, cap over it like so and then lastly the uh, nut goes on top so we'll start sorry for the airplane noise guys well my sexy fiance just came out here oh is she wearing my auto auction rebuild shirt Let's not are you gonna do this on camera? I got work boots on. Well, she's got work boots on. Are you gonna do this on camera? You're gonna you're gonna be on camera doing the shocks. No. You're not. Fine, but look at this. Look at this auto auction rebuild. Look at that. Nice. Very nice, actually. Uh, how are you doing? We're not, <laughs> We're not fitting to do this. All right, that's probably the most you'll ever see her on camera. <laughs> all right so we go back the same way we came off with it slide it through like this this is so difficult to do get it lined up with that hole up there that you can't even see we're gonna have to compress this shock by hand and i can't do this on camera so you guys are just gonna have to hold on a minute all right so i don't recommend doing things this way all right i'm telling you this is not the right way to do it but sometimes when you're in a jam and it's getting to be 100 degrees outside you're just hot you just need to get it done um this is not in yet the issue i had was the bolts down here didn't want to line up with the lower control arm um and the shock because the suspension had dropped uh wouldn't fit all the way up so what i did is i took a jack i put it under the ball joint <clears throat> don't worry I'm not on the ball joint itself and then I jacked it up to get the tension you can see I've got the tension 
uh, back on this. I was going to say to get the tension off, but to put tension back on this so that I've got this insulator where it needs to be. I got the two bolts down in the bottom. We're going to take the new insulator and the hat up top. And like I said, you want this part facing down so that it goes into that hole in there. The hat goes this way. And then just put your, uh, put your nut on the top. And just snug it up by hand. That's good enough for now. All right, we got that on. And I'll tell you right now, I wish she would let me record her doing this side. But this side, the, uh, the shock absorber uh, top is underneath the coolant reservoir. Uh, it's actually right down here. I don't know if you can see where my finger is, but down here is where it is. So we're going to have to take this bolt out. We're going to take, there's a nut over here. We got to try to uh, get this reservoir out of the way, hopefully without having to remove the alternator. Um, and like I said, guys, I'm burning it up. Like I'm just pouring sweat ever. Look at this. This is not a pretty side of me. Um, <laughs> I hope these shocks are worth it, man. Uh, I had to give these uh, bolts down here a nice little tap to get them in there. And basically now we're just going to snug it. Sorry, I just hit my face on the microphone. Now we're just going to basically snug everything up. All right, so this thing is determined to fight me all the way to the end. So <laughs> as I'm hitting the uh, nut with the impact, it barely even went on before it just started spinning. So what you have to do is you have to find yourself an Allen key, stick it in the middle. You need a, a ratcheting wrench is really helpful. Uh, and then you just got to do this by hand. Um, I'm using the uh, body as leverage right here so the Allen wrench doesn't move. I've got my ratcheting wrench underneath here. And basically, you don't need to over torque these, but you want these tight enough that you start seeing a decent bulge out of these rubber bushings. I'll show you that here in a minute as soon as we get done with all this BS ratcheting by hand. All right, so we've got her in. Let me tell you something. That was, uh, <laughs> that was a lot more work than I expected it to be. Um, I'm hoping this back one comes out a lot easier. We'll let this down. There she is. We got one down and <laughs> three more to go. All right, so here we are at the back side. Again, I did nothing other than take the wheel off for you guys. Um, I ended up watching a YouTube video on this one just to see if I could make my life a little easier. That front one was a bear, and it looks like the other front one's going to be a bear too, so I'm hoping these back ones going to be a little easier. So what it looks like we've got here, are, we've got your upper strut, uh, shock mount right here. There's a bolt back here in the back. There's one in the front. These look like they're probably about 13 millimeter. Um, so those should easily come out. Then we've got a big one right here, which is a 24 millimeter. Then we've got the nut to that bolt back here, somewhere, right there, which is also a 24 millimeter. Um, and as I'm going through my tools, I had all of these sockets, but they're all missing. Um, all of the sockets that should fit this are missing. I'm missing a ton of tools. So it looks like I'm going to have to go back to Harbor Freight and just buy some more. Now, what I was able to come up with is uh, the closest thing to a 24 that I have. It is a half inch drive. Um, this is a 15 16 and it fits nice and snug so we should be able to use this to get that lower bolt off the issue is going to be because these struts or these shocks are still good um, they want to stay extended um, the issue is actually compressing them by hand and then trying to maneuver them out um, i watched the youtube video the guy did not have to remove this tie rod i was hoping i wasn't going to have to but i'm going to get an alignment done anyway uh, after these shocks and putting the new tires on so um I don't think we have to remove this. I think it's just going to be a matter of really working that up and sliding it out this way. So wish me luck. All right, so I've got the vice grips down here because that's what you do when you don't have the tools. And we've got our 15 16 right here on the earthquake slider in. There you go. You can now use the vice grips to kind of help knock this sucker out i can't do this one-handed all right so i got those two bolts up there out jessica's going to take You're out this taking me off. 
fine. I'll edit you out of the video. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, now take this bolt out. Just take the bolt out. There you go. Come on. You got to really work it. It's a big bolt. All right. <laughs> You're not used to dealing with big equipment, huh? Well, he'll edit that out for sure. Yeah, we'll edit that out for sure. Okay, next. This is where things get kind of ugly. Um, you've got to compress this lower piece of the shock, which means you got to put pressure on that top piece. So you got to grab it down here. You got to really. I can't do it one handed. We got to put pressure on it and then swing the shock this way. You want to hold this? Mm -hmm. Hopefully, I won't knock into the camera. Now, I watched a guy do this on YouTube, so I'm an expert at it now. You grab the bottom, compress. Ugh, shit. Jesus, these are good shocks. Why are we replacing these again? Uh, good God. <sighs> I can't move it anymore. Stupid son of a bitch. <sighs> yeah, you have to keep it compressed. Which is kind of difficult. <sighs> I don't know. Like pushing it down is one thing, but keeping it that way. You son of a bitch, I thought I had it. Uh oh. <laughs> we might have to call a mobile scan. Ah. Got it. Here's the top. Okay. <laughs> Don't laugh. Alright, Tim, will you hand me one of the new shocks? All right, now we gotta do like we did on the front. We gotta get the jack under here, jack it up by the uh, ball joint because we just don't have enough clearance here to get the bolt through here and through the lower control arm. So I'm gonna do that now. All right, see we're getting close. We'll just hit it with the jack another time or two and we should have the clearance we need. Sometimes you need to give a little motivation. There we go. Put the vice grips back on. And then we'll put the 24 millimeter nut back on it. And that's it for the rears. Okay, now I need the 24 millimeter nut that I took off. All right, and there you have it. The rear is done. All right, so that's gonna be it for the video. That's how you change shocks on a C6 Corvette. It's not the most difficult thing I've ever done, but it's not pleasant either. Now, if you got some air conditioning or if you can wait until springtime or even winter when it's like 10 degrees outside, I would recommend doing that because it is hot as hell out here. Uh, we got this side done. She doesn't wanna be filmed doing the other side, so we're gonna move on to her doing that. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate you taking the time. Give the video a big thumbs up if you like the content. Uh, big thumbs up if you like seeing Jessica in these videos as well. Uh, 
thumbs down if you didn't like the content or thumbs down if you don't like seeing her in the videos. Don't forget to comment below. Be sure to subscribe if you're not already subscribed to the channel. Damn flies. And don't forget to check out the merch store. It definitely helps support the channel to be in the comments uh, pinned, and it'll be in the description as well. Stay safe out there, everybody. I'll catch you soon in the next one.